Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego. ScooterWest.com for everything related to your Vespa or Piaggio scooter. We got you covered, both old ones and new ones. Check us out, ScooterWest.com. So what do we got here? This is the BB350 or the Beverly 350. So what does Robot ride? Everybody asks. Well, this is it. Is it boring? Eh, yeah. I say so, I like it, but it's boring, yeah. But it's the perfect tool for San Diego. And that's why I've continued to ride the scooter over all my other scooters. I have a whole collection of vintage Vespas. I have motorcycles, dirt bikes. They're all specific tools for a specific task. This is like the Swiss Army knife for San Diego. And it does everything good. So you may ask what it is. In the United States, it's called the BV350 from Piaggio. It's got a 330cc motor. It's more than capable of freeway speeds. It's still in current production. The latest model now is equipped with anti-lock brakes, newer and more exciting colors, and the traction control system, along with a key fob that opens the seat. That's about it. This is a first year model, 2013, and I'll go over some of the changes and accessories I've added to the scooter to make it more useful and functional for me. So I'll go over some of the standard stuff and all the additional little tweaks I've done to this scooter. Because everybody knows Robot's a nerd here, so I've pretty much nerded this scooter out. Again, I'm not too fond of the looks. It's a perfect tool. Not, not, not gonna win any beauty pageants with this bike. So starting out with the front, I stuck with the Michelin City Grip tires. I think this is the second tire for 20,000 or over 20,000 miles. The tires last remarkably long on this scooter, which is a good thing if you're gonna commute on it and do high speed on the highway. Something the GTS you know, is not very good at. It tears up those little 12 inch tires in no time. Runs a 16 inch tire in the front, 14 inch in the rear. Being a 2013 or 14 model, it's got the three piston front brake caliper with the link brakes. Later ones, they got rid of the link brakes in favor of the anti-lock brakes, which is definitely a useful thing to have. Um, I don't know, I consider myself a pretty experienced rider. I've never had any time where I've locked it up even in bad incremental weather or any other conditions I've ridden on. One thing I've always found is the brakes are pretty inadequate in the front especially. So I've replaced the stock pads with EBC centered brake pads. Moving on, right behind the tire, you can see a pair of Baja Design spotlights. They're more of an off-road light. I've liked this company for years. They're a San Diego local company made in the United States. They're about one of the best LED lights you can get. So on the handlebars, I added this ugly little switch to my ugly but useful scooter here. And it's got a pair of lights, nice and low, so it's not blinding the traffic, but it throws a ton of light on the road and pretty far. So much better than the stock headlight. I've always been pretty disappointed with the stock headlight because the Vespas have a better headlight than this model does. Moving on up, you see the running lights that are just standard on the BV350, but I've added the turn signals and I included a module that kills the, the running lights as well. Kind of give it a cool look. They come back in, there's a timer, electronic timer with a microprocessor program. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it, but I messed around with it and got it all working. Um, certainly anybody that has some technical abilities could find the same little relays and timers, microcontrollers and wire something like, like that in. Headlight doesn't come on until you start. I replaced the low beam with the HID light several years ago. You could kind of see it's yellowed the lens a little bit because those lights throw a ton of UV out, but it works better than the stock headlight and doesn't really blind the traffic. High beam is just a standard affair doesn't work all that well, don't use it much. Um, got this pretty ugly looking beat up windshield. Well, this, this uh, winter, 2008, you know, late 2018 through early 2019 here in San Diego has been kind of a bummer. It's been raining a lot. Kind of feels like a lot of other wetter parts of the country this year. So I like having a large windshield if you're uh, riding in the rain, kind of keep some of the rain and cold off your hands as well. This is a Givi windshield. I don't think they make this style anymore. I've had to add electrical tape to the top of the headlight because you get this pretty bad glare. 
Uh, my opinion is the windshield hasn't held up all that well. Over 20,000 miles, cracks all over the place. There's some scratches on the one side. Um, put some stickers on it. Don't really care because summer's coming right around the corner and I'll take the windshield off for the summer. Moving on to the controls. The standard affair of the BV controls. You see the grips are pretty worn. Those are the Koso heated grips. Um, normally I'd recommend the Apollo grips, which I have several videos on how to install that have the button built into the grip. This one, I bought the European switch and put it in the blanking spot. Uh, kind of had to shape it. There's off, low, and high for the heated grips. Kind of custom wired that right in. Uh, the dashboard controls are all standard affair, nothing special. Moving on up, here's a ram mount. Right off the windshield bracket, kind of keeps it off the, uh, the mirrors. It also protects the phone uh, rather good. One thing about having the ram mount with the phone on a higher speed scooter out in the wind, if you get a wind gust, it could, as strong as these ram mounts are, if you don't use the protector, it could blow the phone out of the, the mount. But behind a windshield, I've never had a problem. I've off-roaded this scooter. I do all sorts of stupid stuff with it. Um, it's kind of my tool. Don't really care about um, keep putting a little scratch on it here and there, but I try to keep it up. Just like my rally that I've done a video on like a year ago, this scooter's been crashed two times by other people. Don't need to get into that, but you can see I've replaced the inner plastics with the black plastics. 2013 had this red plastic that tended to fade uh, to kind of an ugly maroon pink color. Moving on down below the floorboard, I never run the gas cap. No one's gonna steal my two and a half gallons, three gallons of gas. Uh, just want easy access, so I pull up to a gas station, you can fill it right up. I don't wanna fumble with my key and unlock the thing. So that thing's been sitting on the shelf. Only for the American market ones, they have this silly cover with a lock on it. If it makes you feel better to lock up your gas, I guess, you might like that feature, but not for me, don't really care. Uh, nothing special in a glove box other than always carry a microfiber rag. This was a gift from a customer from Korea. This is Vespa something other in Korean. I wish I knew what it said, but had a Korean customer come through the shop, gave me this microfiber rag and it's been in my scooter ever since. Moving on below the switch gear, I have one of our USB jacks custom wired in there. So if I'm going on a long trip, I can keep the phone charged. As you can see, it just went off. I have a timer, so it runs both the Baja Designs fog lights and the cigarette lighter a little bit longer for another uh, minute after I turn the key off. And I like that feature. I can turn the engine off, pull up to my garage, and still have light. Again, it took some extra nerd out with some electronics uh, to make a little module that does that. Sorry, I don't sell that on our web store. Moving on to the seat. The seat's uh, been reupholstered because the red has faded quite a bit. Standard affair under here, nothing special. Always had a spark plug on me, not really needed. As you see, the BV has a rather large uh, undersea storage, I love that. Definitely adds to the practicality of the scooter, along with a little light and the seat cover, which I just recently used in the rain. So, engine's completely stock. Everybody asks, why don't you modify it? Eh, to me, this is just a tool. And it's a tool that does the job pretty good. I do wish the suspension was better, but I'm kind of too cheap to even buy new suspension for this scooter. I just do the services as per the regular mileage intervals for the scooter to keep it up, put new tires on it as is needed. Um, I think that's the third rear tire, if I recall, and it's, I don't know, probably got another couple thousand miles. Moving on to the top case, I originally had the Vespa top, or the Piaggio top case, the 37 liter top case. This is a rather useful top case, but when somebody else wrecked it, it took that top case out. Well. Wanted to go with something that was more utilitarian and larger. It's rather large. The aluminum finish kind of matches the scooter. It's a very expensive top case um, when it comes to aftermarket top case, the Givi Trekker Outback. Ironically, I think I've sold four of them to Vespa customers. I've set up this top case for customers with Vespas and a lot of people find 
having the utility of having a huge top case is very useful. It's got these extra bars um, to take, you know, take take the uh, top case on and off the scooter. Got some stickers on the back. It locks, but you can leave it unlocked so you can unlatch it. It's got a bungee net with a, a little freebie uh, first aid kit in there. Holds quite a bit and got some tools in there. Hmm, wonder what I'll be doing with those soon. But I find it to be a very useful top case and the beauty of it is it removes from the mono key. That's a specific type of rack. Gibi has mono lock and mono key rack systems. This is a mono key system. You just lift that little lever with the key unlock and it pulls right off. And I've custom uh, fit this plate to the original Vespa or Piaggio uh, top case mounting plate. I thought about fabricating a complete rack for this scooter all out of aluminum because this top case is rather heavy. No problems with the plastic rack, it's like a fiberglass reinforced, but you can see there's a lot of wiggling to it. And I don't really like how it looks. And you know, you see the top case wiggling with the bike. It doesn't look, look all that certain, but it's been very stable and I've used it on many long trips. Scooter's got well over 20,000 miles, not quite 30, I think it's almost 24. So I need to do a service soon on it. Um, but definitely been a very useful tool. I like how you can hop on the San Diego freeways and easily do 80 miles an hour versus the GTS where it struggles to do 80 miles an hour. Uh, very stable ride to higher speeds with the larger tires. Very convenient with the automatic transmission for traffic and very convenient with all the storage. This thing holds more than my old BMW adventure bike with a full set of three bags on it. Definitely more useful. I use this for shopping, commuting, crossing the border, which I do quite a bit. Um, I've done Los Angeles trips. I've had as far as Lake Tahoe. It's a perfect weapon for long distance. So I hope everybody found that pretty useful. Maybe you'll want to get a scooter like this. On the used market, they don't hold their value like the Vespas, but they're quite a good quality scooter as long as they've had regular services on them and been kept up. I would tend to say get the 2015 and later model with ABS brakes and a couple other small issues have been sorted out on the engine versus 2013 through 14 model years, which had some teething pains. Uh, the scooter has had some of those little teething pains like a coolant leak two times. I've had to replace the spark plug cap, uh, the ignition coil, a couple other service related things. And I find the later ones are more reliable based on the customers that come through our shop. We have many customers that rack up tons of miles on these. Uh, the other thing is how many people worked here, Adam? I think six people that worked for the shop or work for the shop currently have BV350s. A lot of BVs here. It's been the most popular scooter for everybody that works here. It's not a Vespa. We all love Vespas here, but if you're looking for the Swiss Army knife of scooters that's capable of higher speed, this is it right here. Maybe you're not amused by it. Maybe you're disappointed that I ride something so boring as my everyday rider. But I save all the nice stuff for the Sunday rides. So why you want to beat on your nice stuff throughout the week? My neighbors come by my garage, they're like, man, why do you have so many motorcycles and scooters? I say, ah, doesn't your, don't you have more than one knife in your kitchen? Same thing to me. One other little um, Easter egg I added to this is the MP3 key. Fob. It's the same Sidewinder key found on the BV, but I put the key fob from the MP3 along with the receiver. I got this off a of salvage MP3. Push the button, open the seat, just like the new ones. As silly as that is, I just had to add it. So there's the third episode of What Robot Rides. You can look at the previous videos. I have my Rally 200 and a Vespa ET4. I have several other Vespas, maybe I'll add them. I want to get everybody else that works here to do uh, rider reviews of what they ride or what they're restoring. There's a lot of guys here working at the shop restoring their own scooters, mostly vintage. Uh, there's even one new one that's getting painted back up. Uh, we do a lot of work on our own stuff. It's always pretty fun. I think the audience would love to see what we work on. And I know everybody wants to see what I'm always doing. So 
There you go. Robot here, for Vespa Motorsport, scooterwest.com. For anything Vespa or Piaggio related, check us out. Uh, follow us on Instagram or Facebook, Vespa Motorsport. Follow me, Robot Vespa. Until next time, Robot here. Peace, ride safe, and keep the rubber side down.